thank you very much, Your Excellency, our President, Dr. William Ruto, the leadership of the House, our Cabinet Secretaries, our Principal Secretaries, and everybody present. Good morning. God is good. Another time. On behalf of our President, let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this meeting, a joint meeting between the Executive and our legislators from our side of the coalition, a meeting of minds to chart the way forward, because as the President has aptly put it, this is a year. Uh, we have this year 2024 and 2025 to work for the people of Kenya and fulfill our five-year mandate with the people. Starting 2026, anything that we do is perceived as politics and as a strategy to look for votes. So this great meeting that the President convened and insisted that we need to engage with our leaders in both houses so that we are all speaking the same language. Your Excellency, let me thank you once more for always having time to engage with elected leaders. It is your philosophy that elected leaders are very important and you cannot get far without their input. And that is why when the executive literate was convened, you insisted that the legislature should be here so that we discuss and all talk in this, the same language. Before I invite the President, I just had two things that I wanted to say. One, I want to thank our members in both houses for the support and the commitment in making sure that our legislative agenda carries a day in Parliament. And uh, I want to say that we'll continue to engage all the time so that we are all looking at things the same way because we serve the people of Kenya and we all belong to the same administration. Secondly, I want to ask our cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries to replicate what the president and I do when we are going out there. Anytime the president is going to a county, the planning is done together with the elected leaders, especially from this side of the people who support the government. We want to ask our cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries when you have some programs in a certain county please talk to the elected leaders let them not uh, <laughs> let them not hear yeah. that you are there from some hostels that have been posted or they are hearing from the media it is not right it is not respectful even where you are going and you have been invited by governors, you are in the national government. And these are the people who work together in the national government. Let us involve them. And if the president has time to engage them, I have time to engage them. You should also have time to engage them. And I also want to plead with our CSs and our PSs, don't delegate consultation of elected leaders to your personal assistance. Do it personally. Because we do so ourselves. When we are going out, the president creates a day to engage with leaders from that region, understand the issues, agree on the program, and everything is very seamless. I do the same. So let us from here have time to talk to elected leaders because it is the, it is the right thing to do. Again, we also want to ask the leadership of Parliament to also consider much as you have the role to oversight government and call our ministers to Parliament. Sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to work because our ministers are perpetually in the House in different committees. I think your Excellency will request a meeting with the leadership so that we agree on how to balance between ministers appearing in parliament to answer questions and also be available to serve. Because sometimes even we have cabinet committees, we are not able to prosecute our agenda because ministers are in out of parliament. But I believe with some engagement with the leadership, we can agree on an acceptable way 
where we allow ministers to function at the same time they appear before uh, uh, parliament. Finally, uh, on the national government uh, uh, constitution development fund, our members, you know for sure, and it's not a secret, that our courts wanted to do away with this fund. But our president, having been a member of parliament, appreciating the importance of that fund, in his magnanimity, fought very hard to ensure that this fund stays. And it was the right decision, because this fund is a fund that is felt. Because one, is only 6% that goes to recurrent. Everything else goes to development. So when the government, led by our president, has a few challenges in terms of availability of exchequer because of the challenges of revenue collection, we also want to ask our members, likewise, to extend the same magnanimity when the parliament is taking a decision on how to react when money is not available on time. I have sat with the president many times and I want to confirm to you that he is on the neck of Professor Dungu and P.S. Kipto to release money to members of parliament through the fund. And he is very clear that it should always be given a priority. So, so some of us who sit with him making those decisions, when we see you joining the other side of the house in a way that is a bit demoralizing, we feel a little bit low. So I want to ask you, Kaige, to be magnanimous, to appreciate the challenges that we face as a country, and to know that the president from where he sits is your number one supporter in terms of having funds to uh, implement your mandate. I think with that understanding, it will help the situation as we move on. Finally, before I call you, your Excellency, to address these great people, let me ask everybody here, the executive and the legislature, let us focus on helping the president to succeed. I am persuaded from where I sit that that is the most important thing in the next two years. Those of us who campaigned for President William Ruto, give the people of Kenya hope and assurance that you transform this country and their lives. We therefore have a duty to make sure that President William Ruto and his administration must succeed. Let us spend time and focus in activities and programs to make sure that the President honors his mandate with the people of Kenya. Other things can wait for 2026. 2024, 2025, we must all be united and must focus to do whatever it takes to make sure that the president delivers to the people of Kenya. Finally, Your Excellency, I had somebody saying that you should not look at the rear mirror. I want to encourage you to continue looking at the rear mirror because the inventor of the motor vehicle was not mad by putting the rear mirror. In your leadership, Your Excellency, you have made it very clear that no Kenyan should be left behind. So you must continuously continue looking at the rear mirror to make sure that all Kenyans are on board and they are not left behind. Again, Your Excellency, there are also people who would want to deliver your vehicle. There are those who like to puncture the rear wheels. There are those who like to remove goods from your pickup behind. You must continuously look at the rear mirror and the side mirrors so that anybody who may want to derail your vehicle, you are ahead. And again, Your Excellency, your pace is too fast for those of us who help you, myself and these cabinet secretaries. Sometimes you are too fast, you leave us behind. So continue looking. So when you find your deputy is being left behind, you urge him to come to catch up with you and the rest to catch up with you so that this country can move forward. With those few remarks, let me request you to be upstanding and help me to usher in our leader, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Makofi.
Asante ni sana tafadhali tuketi. Um, Mr. Deputy President 